The next step in glycolysis is catalyzed by the enzyme aldolase, which breaks fructose 1,6-bisphosphate into two 3-carbon units, dihydroxyacetone phosphate and glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. The standard free energy change uh, for this reaction is actually quite large and positive. Um, and that's mostly due to enthalpy. It just takes um, a lot of energy to break this carbon-carbon uh, bond between uh, carbon-4 and carbon-3 of fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. Um, but in this cell, the uh, free energy change that we actually observe um, is uh, smaller and much more favorable. And that's mostly driven by uh, reactant and product concentrations. All right, so the, in the first step of this mechanism, uh, fructose 1,6-bisphosphate binds to the active site of aldolase. Uh, and the, the enzyme actively opens uh, the, the fructose 1,6-bisphosphate ring um, in another step, but that doesn't actually happen in this particular active site. It happens somewhere else on the, on the, on the enzyme, so I haven't shown that here. Um, so the first... Uh, uh, in the first step of this of this reaction, we get a nucleophilic attack of this carbon two ketone, and that's going to make a covalent bond between the enzyme uh, and my sugar. So I get a nucleophilic attack here. Uh, the electrons from this double bond push up onto this oxygen, and then they go and grab a proton from this waiting glutamate residue down here. And you'll notice that both uh, this lysine up here and this glutamate down here, they start out protonated in the first step of this mechanism. All right, so at the end of this step, I get a covalent bond between my lysine and my sugar. All right, so the next step of this reaction is just a proton transfer. From my um, from my lysine to my glutamate, so this negative charge on the glutamate is going to come up and it's going to grab a proton off of here. All right, so now we're in the right protonation states for the next step. So now what's going to happen is I'm going to form uh, what's called a shift base. So this step is shift base formation. A shift base has the structure, a structure that looks like this. I have a carbon that's double bonded to uh, nitrogen. Um, usually that nitrogen is also protonated and that nitrogen forms another bond to something else. So there's positive charge on this nitrogen. And then there's also a positive charge on this carbon, just like you would expect if this nitrogen was an oxidant and you had a, and you had a um, you had a ketone or something like that. And so, uh, so there's a partial positive charge on this carbon, uh, and that makes your shift base pretty reactive. So in order to form the shift base, what's going to happen is my lone pair of electrons from the nitrogen that I just regenerated is going to push down to make a double bond here to carbon two of my sugar. Let's number the carbons. Now let's do it in blue just to be consistent. Let's number the carbons of my sugar again. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then from there, um, the, uh, the electrons from this carbon oxygen bond are going to go and grab a proton from my glutamate. And the electrons from there are going to push onto that oxygen and give that oxygen back a negative charge. And so this um, this bond here is going to break, and this hydroxyl group is going to leave as water. All right. So let's just put that in here. I get water leaving. Well, let's put that on the other side, just to be clear. So after the previous step, I eliminated a water. 
All right, so now I have my, this guy is my shift base. And again, I have a partial positive charge down here, which is uh, pretty reactive and is going to allow me to actually break the bonds that are between uh, my carbon three and my carbon four of the sugar. Okay, so what happens next? Next, my um, my negative charge on my glutamate is going to come in and it's going to grab this proton off of my carbon-4 hydroxyl. That's going to form a double bond between this oxygen and carbon-4. And then that's actually going to break this um, carbon-4 to carbon-3 bond. So the electrons from uh, from this particular bond, we're going to push up to make a double bond between carbon three and carbon two. And then the electrons from this double bond in my shift base are going to push up onto my nitrogen. Okay, so at the end of this step, I've broken my um, my C3 to C4 bond. Okay, so this guy, which was originally carbons four, five, and six of uh, my sugar, this guy leaves as gap. Yeah, this is glyceraldehyde three phosphate. So now what am I left with? Bound to my enzyme, I'm left with carbon one, two, three. And this unit, this is going to become dihydroxyacetone phosphate. So, uh, so in the next step of this mechanism, I get a lone pair that's on my nitrogen. And this should look pretty familiar. This lone pair is going to push down to make a double bond here. And these double bond electrons are going to grab a proton from my glutamate. So in this step, I am regenerating uh, my shift base. So now gap has left and I've regenerated my shift base. It's carbon one, carbon two, carbon three. And now I pretty much just have the reverse of some of my earlier steps. Instead of a water leaving, I have a water that comes in. Uh, the uh, negative charge from my glutamate is going to come in and grab a proton off of that water. And then uh, electrons from here are going to go up onto that oxygen. That oxygen is going to be negatively charged. It's going to be a really um, hot nucleophile. Uh, and it's going to attack this partially positively charged carbon from my shift base. So the electrons from that double bond are going to push up onto that nitrogen. And then I'm almost done. Uh, so I just have to kick this guy off of my enzyme, off of my lysine. So again, I get another, uh, I get a proton transfer. So the lone pair here is going to come in and it's going to grab a hydrogen off of my glutamate. So I regenerate a negative charge here and a positive charge here, which prepares me for the next step. So in the last step of my mechanism, uh, this negative charge here is going to come in and it's going to grab a proton off of my carbon two hydroxyl and that's going to allow the electrons from that bond to make a double bond between carbon two and that oxygen uh, and then i'm going to kick off my lysine and break that bond uh, to the enzyme so at the end of my mechanism i have freed up my dihydroxyacetone phosphate
I've regenerated my lysine and my glutamate in the charged states that they had at the beginning of the reaction, uh, and I'm done. My dihydroxyacetone phosphate can leave uh, and be converted to uh, GAP by triose phosphate disomerase.